Okay, my third point, um, last point. Um, really, it's about networking. Okay, uh, we, we talk about the six degrees of separation and things like that. Twitter is putting you, it's, it's breaking down all these barriers. It's going down to five, four, three, two, um, to, 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 to just one degree. Okay, um, a, few, a few points is, of course, um, cutting through personal space. There are a few of you in here I can see that I have never met you before, but I have communicated with you via Twitter. Uh, this is, you know, this is great. Me and Michael this morning, I looked at him and I immediately knew it was him. I saw that photograph of him. It wasn't half face, right? You had a whole full photograph of yourself. Um, a few of my friends in here are people who I only got to know via uh, because of social media. I've never met them before, but because this thing brings us together, um, I'm I'm now I'm very proud now to be able to call them my friends. Um, the second thing, of course, it, it goes it goes really to um, to beyond cyberspace as well. What Twitter has done is twi uh, allowed uh, people to of similar interests to get together for gatherings and stuff. Tweet ups are very common in in in, in um, KL at the moment, and uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Poken. It's this little gadget here which is basically like a digital digital name card um, and what you do is you poke in each other and then uh, information will be transferred between my poken and David's for example and I can I know it sounds very rude right I can plug it into my <laughs> I'm sorry I can plug it into my my computer it loads up my poken account and it immediately registers um, David's account if he's registered as well it's um, it's great so what we did is we, we had this we met up um, these are all social media tools, so you can basically link all my Twitter, Flickr, Facebook, everything, information into that one name card and people can access it. If I'm going to meet you here and tell you, hi, my name is Nikki Cheong, you might spell it N-I-K-K-I like everybody else does, which annoys me, but um, you won't find me on Google, right? With this way, you have immediate access to all my social media profiles. Uh, so. What it's done is, as well, it's allowed us to go beyond just talking to each other and communicating on cyberspace. We are meeting up, we're having drinks together. Um, so if anybody tells you that social media means you have no life, it's not true. Uh, you just spend more time with other people who have similar interests as you do. Um, oh, something went wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, um, another thing that what I was saying about social media, about bringing people together, is people of similar interests can come together. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a plugging here. Uh, we are organizing a festival, which is which is uh, a global um, charity event, um, of course mobilized by Twitterers. Um, it's two tiered. Once in February, where they get the whole world, Twitterers around the world, to mobilize for a single cause. This year it was water, and then the festival local in September, which what people do is uh, you choose each city chooses their own causes. So um, there's a few of here, David and. Uh, and me and a few friends, we, we, we are organizing this. But what it's done is, most of the people who are on the organizing committee, I had never met or knew existed until Twitter. And most of them, I've never even seen them until the first meeting we had after we agreed to work on this together. It brings people of similar interests together, uh, whether you're interested in cars, whether you're interested in, in news, whether you're interested in, in mobile phones or comics, for example. It actually, it's a great, platform for you to find your niche um, markets for your personal self uh, which of course translate for you guys especially as PR practitioners and marketeers um, imagine what you can do for your brands okay um, then of course because it's so much part of my life I try to um, make it part of my work as well um, some, some people someone messaged me a few days ago and said how do you have a full-time job organize little events and things like that and still have time to Twitter and Facebook so much okay it's because I do it on the go um, I'm on it all the time and I try to incorporate it into almost every facet of my life so with work um, what we do at the start as well is we try to incorporate all this and um, with Rage the use section that I specifically work with uh, we don't just use them as a tool to disseminate and engage our readers but we actually use the features to try and um, to spread our news and stories and things. If you see um, this one up here, um, it's a blog. What we get to do is, with, I, and I consider this blog social media tools as well, some people don't. Um, but what we get to do is we get to share with people things that we don't normally put in the newspaper. So if I was going to write an article about, about Manchester United coming to KL and play, what people in the papers don't see is that we got to uh, meet them behind the scenes as well. So using the blogs, I get to share with the readers 
another part of our jobs as journalists, uh, which you might not usually see. Um, the other thing is with this one, the one in the bottom right, uh, I call it Twitterazi. So it's kind of Twitter plus paparazzi. I'm a bit smart like that, so I play with words. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, what, what we did is basically we stalk celebrities on Twitter and we find out what's happening with them. Uh, and then we source around the internet um, through our wire photos and things to find moments and, and capture it. So for example, if Andy Roddick was saying, I'm playing in, about to go on court right now, we'll Twitter about it and say he's about to go and play against, save Roger Federer, and we'll be able to share photos with people of him actually playing because he might not be able to, to, to share that with you. Um, so we're using social media elements to try and, and, and uh, make our website and make, make our, our work more interesting as well. Um, the other thing that we did, um, of course, is using uh, live blog chats. And uh, we, start, we, start, we first did it uh, with um, the American Idol finals last year, uh, early this year, um, where in one hour we got 1,500 viewers coming in um, to, to just find out what I was thinking about the American Idol. I was just doing a live review, right? But basically, they were engaging and they were talking to me. Since then, we've done a few other things. We've done the, the Champions League um, finals. Um, and, and the Star Online as well uh, has brought in prominent personalities to, to engage with people um, through social media, through a live blog chat. Um, it all started really with David Archuleta, unfortunately. Um, he came to KL and what I thought would be very interesting to do was um, to start twittering that few hours that I was spending with him. Uh, yeah, I got to meet David Archuleta. Um, so what, what I did was, I didn't tell everybody where he was going to be, it was supposed to be a secret location, he went to a school and I started twittering and this was a time when we only had like maybe 50 followers and I started twittering and telling them kind of going, I'm on the way to the location now, I started taking tweet pics, um, pictures that can be attached to my Twitter and I said, um, can you guess which direction I'm heading? So I, you know, I wasn't driving, um, uh, somebody else was while I was taking a photograph. Um, you know, so and I was doing things like that, and then and people started engaging, and we were in within few minutes, people were, like fifty or sixty people had already viewed our photo, my image, even though I only had like thirty or forty, fifty followers. People were retwe retweeting it; they were sharing the links with their friends, um, and I think one of the images of him appearing on stage got like hundred and seventeen um, um, views in like fifteen minutes. Um, this is a great way to reach out to people. Um, so, so that's why we started you know, being much more active with social media at work as well. Um, how do I use social media? Of course, computer, and I've got my trusty little old iPhone here. Christmas is coming if anybody wants to get me the 3GS. Um, I, I Twitter at home, I Twitter at work, uh, I Twitter while waiting in a bank, while, you know, um, during meals, uh, when I first wake up, before I go to bed, uh, while not while driving. Um, <laughs> You know, it's 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 for me, right? The way the way the way social media works is it's not just a tool for me to communicate with people now. Um, I and I think that's a lot of people have resistance to it. I think we need to get out of that hate space. Um, Twitter is not a trend. Uh, it's 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 a whole new world. It's a whole space. It's a democratic space. It it's opened up so many channels of communication for so many different reasons. Each of you um, had. They have used social media tools. You have used it for many, many different reasons. Um, it's just it's gone beyond just a computer. It really has been about about you and finding the best way that it works for yourself. Yeah. When I woke up yesterday morning, I went on on Facebook and I I, I saw so many um, Facebook status messages about the passing of a friend. Um, back to your H1N1 story. It's not been reported yet, but I was told that it was a H1N1 death, um, but it's not been it logged by the ministry, or what, but I don't know the official inf uh, official thingy. Um, but everybody was saying, um, goodbye Leroy, we love you, I'm sorry, we miss you. And I didn't know who Leroy was, but so many of my friends knew him. So I thought maybe, you know, it was a nickname or something and all. So what I did was I went to my friend's Facebook and I started doing searches on this Leroy and I found out that I actually know this person. He's not a friend, but he's an acquaintance. Um, you know, if not for social media, I would never have known this because I didn't know him very well. Nobody would have texted me to say he passed away and give me his funeral details. But now it's everything is on, on Facebook. Um, last night, while I was working on this presentation, I found out that Chelsea is not allowed to buy any more players. Um, 
th this morning I found out that the Mimor and Perez Hilton are having a fight on Twitter and lawsuits have been sent to each other. Uh, this is how fast information is coming in. This is within minutes of the lawsuit being sent. Perez Hilton just wrote to the Mimor and to somebody and said, don't worry, my, law my lawyers are writing a letter as we speak. The letter's not even done yet, but we know a letter's on the way to the Mimor for, for libel. She called him... Uh, uh, he, sh he posted a photo of her daughter, which you could see her cleavage. Uh, she's only 15, and so he, he called it child pornography. She called it child pornography. He's suing her for libel and slander. Um, but it's very quick information, okay? Um, how many of you are not on social media at all? Like, you don't use any of the social media tools? Okay. So I guess you guys are into it. But I wanted to say this because I talked to a lot of people who are not into it and stuff like that. And I, I, I know it's, it seems complicated. I know it seems very hard and a lot of people don't understand it. Um, but if any of you are here and shy to put your hands up, please don't let any of the things that we've said throw you off. It sounds like it's this huge space, but it really is very simple. It's almost as simple as 140 characters. You will grow into it. And without knowing it, it will consume your life. But it's not a bad thing, okay? It's Especially for some people like us who are in the communication industry, this is a great, great opportunity. Um, you, you build connections, whether you realize it or not. Um, on, on Facebook, um, just comments and stuff. I can know whether you're having a good day or a bad day. Uh, my colleagues know not to bug me if they see a Facebook status going, Nikki woke up with the wrong side of the bed this morning. Um, they know how to stay away. Um, at the end of the day, we like all these connections. We are human beings after all, no matter how many technological and digital tools we use um, and I think because of this human connection uh, because it might seem very sterile because it's all text and things but it there is a very strong connection with, even with people that you might not know personally but come on if somebody's having a bad day and somebody says you know someone just passed away you, you immediately feel sympathetic for them even though you don't know this person and on Twitter you will maybe send your condolences and everything even though you've never met this person um, this is the reason why this connectivity I think is the reason why social media is so popular and this is not a fact, it's not a trend. And I want to emphasize this because a lot of people keep coming to me going, so when is Twitter going to go? Twitter might not exist in five years' time, but something else will, and it will be better than Twitter. I can assure you that. Um, so with that, um, thank you very much for your time. I, uh, I, hope that it didn't, you know, I hope that you don't think that social media is an indulgent thing. There is so many things that you can do with it. Um, and we really, really cannot afford to ignore and shut it out. Thank you very much.